Mm -hmm. I bet. Um, what I was going to say, uh, hey, can we screen Logo's call? I know he's going to be the first caller. <laughs> yes, as soon as we see his number pop up, we're just going to not answer it. So let's see. 394. That's all you need to know. But once we see that, we're screening that. Uh hey, Dre, look, rested, baby. That's some good luck. Heck rest. no, I'm tired. Heck no. <laughs> we gotta get the white outliner so we can put it underneath the eye. You know how women be having to make their eyes look a little wider, you know. All right. So I keep this chat open. Perez, you you go live on YouTube as well. All right, because um, I try to keep the Facebook chat open on my computer, but uh, I didn't remember about the uh, YouTube. So what's up, Dre? What you, who cooking? Who cooking what? You Tomorrow? The Latino, the Latino mañana? Latino food? Uh, yeah, Bria and her mom is cooking, bro. Okay. Uh, and I'm chilling. They don't want me in there. Keep, keep, the diaper, keep the diaper clean. All right, everybody's excited. You got to be excited to be invited, baby. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the live call-in barber session. I am joined, as usual, by my co-host, JP, the Razor. Dre, cut it out. And tonight's a big night. I mean, I'm excited, bro. This, this man's story is incredible. I've heard it. Dre's heard it. JP, I don't think you've heard it, but it, it's amazing. We're going to kick it. Make sure you call. You guys got the number. 312-626-6799 when you're prompted. 45-4500-4545. You can ask questions, kick it. Anything to the panel. Jay, fade it. What is up? Man, what, what is, is up, man? It's a blessing to be on here. Thank, Thank you, bro. bro. Hey, pleasure Thank you, all man. Right, Thank you for taking time on a busy Wednesday, especially before Thanksgiving, to come on here and show us love. Absolutely. Yeah, it's only right. So, start from the top, bro. I mean, how'd you get into barbering? What, what, you know, where's it taking you now? It's crazy. The, the story's amazing, but let, 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 the, let the people hear it. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Yeah, so uh, I'm 23 years old. I started cutting hair when I was 15, and it was just cutting my own hair, like most people start, you know, and... Uh, from there, I remember messing myself up, and I went to school, and I had a line in the back of my head. I had, like, a flat top that I was trying to recreate from the barber I was going to. And this girl called me out in class, and she's like, is there supposed to be a line in your head? And I was like, what line? I was like, mm. there's no line. Like, I, I blended it. I already know I'm good. I'm nice with these clippers. And so I looked, like, in the mirror and saw it, and I was like, dang, like, she called me out in front of everybody. So that made me want to get better right there. And uh, I just took it and ran with it. Honestly, I started cutting all my friend's hair. Uh, until I was in high school or until I was in college. Um, I remember a defining moment was like, there was a basketball player named Jerron and he was the uh, point guard of the Ohio University basketball team. And he did, he just DM'd me. I don't know how he found me, but uh, he liked the haircut. I don't know. It was like my first time cutting waves, but I just went for it. And uh, he told me like, yo, I'm going to bring the whole team with me next time. And then like, I feel like that's where like Jay Faded was born. Cause I was like, all right, I got to get better. Cause if not, like, all these guys ain't going to come back. Like, I got to be nice. So I started, like, investing in tools and, like, uh, watching. I would watch a tutorial, like, right before I would cut all the hair, like, just to make sure I had it down. And, uh, yeah, long story short, I, I ended up uh, buying a one-way ticket to California. I moved to Sacramento. Uh, and then now I'm here in L.A. But I got a quick question before we get too far into it. Yeah. Shorty that, that called you out, mm -hmm. you sent her a little reminder. <laughs> like, look at me now. Look at me now. I never thought to do I'm that, bro. <laughs> right. that on. I remember her, her, her name. I'm not, I can find her on Facebook. You know? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, look what you started. The back, the look at that line all the way back there and waiting for me. That's pretty nice. dope. <laughs> yeah, no, I might have to reach out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, bro. So, oh, real quick. What prompted you to, to California, man? Uh, man, it's a crazy story. I was actually going to, um, I made a vision board when I was 19 years old and I just put the, the first people that I really found uh, on YouTube when I was learning how to cut hair. 
So I found Chuka Torres uh, in California, and I found Chris Basio in Tampa, Florida, obviously. So it could have um, been Tampa. I still Jesus. have the vision board to this day. I could actually show you guys. Um, yes. Okay, here I go. So oh, um, you got proof, baby. Let's go. It's a little dark. The receipt. Modern time. That's receipts right there. You said you guys can see this. This photo. That is dope. It's on the bottom right. That mm. is the yeah, right there. That is oh, dope, bro. Oh, dope, man. Yo, that die legend shirt, man. That that, throw that's, that's, that's the OG. Bro. That's the OG. You know, that's nobody, the OG. nobody got I, that I, one. I, I got that shirt in the back. I was gonna wear that today, but that's, you know. that's you on there, Christian. I know, right? That is the, no, no, that's okay. Bobby. That's Bobby. Like, I know. <laughs> that yeah, is dope, bro. Story, sure. That's what brought me up to California. Was, uh, it was a go to county route. <laughs> I mean, you're missing, you're, you're, you're missing out a lot here, man. You know, I'm sorry you had to make that decision to go to Cali, brother. <laughs> Dre, you but nonetheless, so you took off, you landed in California. Yeah. Then tell us the story from there. Pick up after that. Oh, man. It was so much leading up to that moment, saving up enough. I used to, like, call it my freedom fund, like, just to feel like I would be able to make it, you know? not. I didn't want to have to be worried about where my next meal was, like, whenever I moved, so... Um, yeah, it was like a year of saving, and then uh, I remember just buying that ticket, and then everything made sense after I bought it, but that was like the scariest decision of my life, because um, I didn't buy like, you know, a round trip or like travel insurance or none of that. Like, it was like, I'm taking this flight and I'm going, like, you know, there was no, there was no plan B. Um, Where were you moving from? From Ohio, so uh, Southeast Ohio, like Columbus, Ohio. Okay, so compared to, compared to, compared to Sacramento, Sacramento, is it relatively a lot smaller, or? Oh yeah, I was I was in a small town called Nelsonville. It was five thousand people. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> you go to in high school. Yeah. yeah, very good. Yeah. At this particular time, time, did you already have your barber's license or no? How did come about? You just winged it? I'm not ready. Like when I look back at it now, I don't know. I really do give a lot of uh, appreciation to like if I was a shop owner, like in Chuka's, Chuka's position, and a kid like me came along, I would be like, "Bro, you're not ready yet. Like we can't have you come here and here." <laughs> So, so what happened? Did you just did you just show up at the barbershop? Barber like, yo, <laughs> you got a spot for me? <laughs> we got we got like details, bro. I'm here, man. <laughs> um, I'm the toughest barber out in Ohio, man. I know you got a chair for me. Yeah, long story short, I just uh, I talked to Chuka through DMs in Ohio, and uh, I just kind of shot my shot. Like I just said, like yo, as an apprentice, I could learn a lot from you. And uh, he said for show. Sure. That was all he said. <laughs> He, 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 he wasn't there. He wasn't there. there. <laughs> but they, they, they didn't think you was going to pop him in there. My man, like, yo, you remember me? <laughs> <laughs> you said that. Remember for yeah. sure? <laughs> and uh, I just shot my shot again. It was like, we had like a quick conversation. I said, quick phone call. And he just sent his phone number. So that was another like moment of like, wow, this is about to come true. So I called him. We had like a 10 minute phone call. And he must have just, he liked what he heard or something. Because um, he was like, yeah, we might have a spot for you. That's all he really said, though. And then I just booked a flight. I let him know, like, hey, I booked a flight in the humblest way possible. I'll be there. Uh, it was like October 9th of 2017. And uh, yeah, I mean, he didn't know I was like moving. He thought I was just going to come check out the shop. So, uh, <laughs> so after our conversation, he's like, oh, you moved here. I was like, yeah. He was like, oh, where, you, where are you staying? I didn't even have a place to stay, bro. I was in a, like, like night, night, night to night, I was staying in a hostel. hostel. Like you know, it's like yeah, a, yeah. You know, that's a hostel. Hostel. yeah. That's, that's wild, bro. That's that's, that's put, put your back, back on the wall. See what you made of, bro. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Pretty much, man. That's like I either I make it or I don't make it, but I'm on all in. That's, that's a gambler right there, man. Yeah, especially in expensive, expensive, expensive California, California too. It's not like he did it in a cheap spot. He, he went to the most expensive place he could possibly go and still still pulled it off. My mm -hmm. man went from affordable Ohio to the, the West Coast. West Coast. Mm -hmm. You got to give it up for that. No joke, no joke. So, bro, 23 years old, that's crazy to me. Um, all you've achieved, you know, where you're at now at, at, at 23 years old. Thank what you. would you attribute your success to? Uh, I, mean, I feel like I made a lot of sacrifices that the kid, like average kids our age don't want to make. But it, because it's just natural to me, like, I don't really feel fulfilled when I'm doing that type of stuff, like going to the club or 
um, just like short term decisions that they don't really like feel fulfilling to me. I, I like to think of my long term vision and like what God has for me, and I just try to stick to that. Because I remember being in Ohio, and all my friends are like kicking it every night, like smoking, drinking, whatever. And I just remember feeling depressed. Like I never really felt depressed in my life, but if I had to pick a time, that would be it where I felt depressed. Like like I'm just not doing what God asked for me. Like my calling, I got to go figure it out. Um, and so that's what I would attribute to is like not living life with like um, short term, like um, short term gratification and just being like, no, I'm, I'm a long term thinker. Like I'm going to sacrifice now what's good for what's great, as they say. Um, yeah. And then surrounding myself, like doing whatever it takes to surround myself around the right people. The biggest decision I made was, you know, moving to Sacramento, getting to that shop. I was around, you guys know, Zay the Barber, Ty Barber sign, Daniel Deluxe, Dunn the Barber. Um, Big Chuka, hitters. big hitters. Um, like, if I it was sink or swim, you know, I almost like had to become better than who I was. So, um, yeah, those two things I feel like. Just, so how how much how welcoming it was, you know? Sometimes you yeah, as a new barber, man, you kind of like uh, you put yourself in a predicament where at times we feel like we know everything, and then they kind of give you a bit of a humble pie. Was they very welcoming? Did they act, you know, help you hands on? How was that process? I remember the first time I uh, did a haircut, I was right next to Chuka, and uh, he heard my tremors, and bro, they were like, eh, eh, eh. they were so old. After <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, the haircut, he walked up to me, and he's like, he's like, you know, you're going to close out, right? <laughs> I'm like, he said, I got, he said, when you get your new blade, I got this, I got this modified for you. <laughs> <laughs> but we need a whole cover for you. Yeah, I was in, I was in like a whole scarcity mindset of like afraid to like, I don't know, bro. I just didn't invest in my tools like I should have at the time. But um, they were, they were there to give me that like very. Um, it was coming from love, but the feedback was like, hey, bro, you're, you're messing up. This is how you do it. Like um, another story is like I did a hot towel, and I remember. Putting put the, the towel, towel on wrong, wrong in the video, video but I thought, thought the, the video, video was fire. It was my first time <laughs> making a video like that. that. And they were, they were watching, watching the video in the shop and clowning me. Like, like they, they were like, like, <laughs> like this is someone who don't know how to do a hot towel. Like, and I'm like, what's so funny? Like, I don't know if they're talking about me or not. And they're like, right, come here. And they show me, they're like, this is how you do a hot towel, bro. So little things like that. Like, I had to just kind of leave my ego at the door, leave my pride to the side, and just, you know, learn. Did you have. Did you have a uh, a call home moment? So like when you when you leave the house, <laughs> yeah, sometimes you gotta put it, Ma, I don't know, Ma. I made a mistake. I don't know if this is it, Ma. Facts. Facts. Uh, I got a funny one, and then I got more of like a learning lesson one. Uh, Cause I moved to you know multiple cities, so in Sacramento, it was the second time my bike got stolen. I was like, man, I'm done. <laughs> what the bike? The bike. The bike. The bike. Hey, 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 hey. What bike? My bike. My bike. My bike. My bike. My bike. My fault. No, yeah. Uh, I was at the barber shop, man, and I, I locked it up uh, on one of those, you know, things they have on the side of, on the sidewalk. One of those cheap bike locks, like the ones they just take fly cutters and cut. Yeah. So uh, that's the first bike, and then the second time it got stolen, I was just running into the shop because I lost my wallet and I thought it was in the shop, so I found wow. my wallet. That fast? I can't bro. find my wallet. Bro, bro that fast? <laughs> bro. Those they don't cats, play out there, man. They don't play, bro. bro remember when we got a rental broken into? That was in Cali, bro. God, man. Hey, bro. They just smashed the window, bro, and took the whole book bag. You literally just went in the shop and came back? And yeah, that's the What, did you find the well, wallet? It sounded like, it sounded no, like, like a movie. movie. And you lost your wallet and your bike? That weekend, I found the wallet, and all the money was gone, bro. <laughs> man, you should have changed your name from J Faded to LL Cool J, bro. We were taking a lot of L's in Cali, bro. <laughs> Hey, my people, we got our first caller of the night. You guys, it's not three nine four, is it? You want, it's not three nine four. It is not three. It is not three nine four. It's you a two one zero. That's a West Coast number. You want to take? You want to take? You want to take your first call, Jay? Let's do it. Let's do it. Of course. Two right. one zero. You are on the two forty five hotline on the Barber Session Live. Go. What up, Super Mac? Get the hand. What up, Jay Faded? What up? Hey, hey, hey. What is going on? What's, What's going on, man? Good. Good. Yo, man, you've been, sending, you've been sending people all the way from Florida. I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> that was going to be my question, man. How was that experience? Um, I These these two uh, individuals found me on social media, 
And, you know, they're going to look for a good barber or someone with good, you know, scheduling appointments. And yeah. I have been taking care of them ever since. And when they tell me they're going to L.A. for a music video shoot, you know, you're um, honestly one of the top ones that came to my mind. And I was like, well, you know what? Look this dude up. Jay Faye's on Instagram. And I know for sure he'll, he'll, you know, he'll look out for you. How was that experience with us? All right. First of all, nothing but gratitude, bro. There's so many barbers in L.A. And I feel like a lot of people could come to mind uh that could take care of your clients so it's an honor and it's a blessing um first of all no doubt, no doubt. and uh bro it's nothing but love like i'm inspired by them as well they were like doing music videos and stuff out here so and they came through twice i think they just had another one like 10 days ago like a week ago yeah bro like they keep flying over and like as it goes down the street <laughs> and uh you know just it just goes to show with how they feel about hookup bro because honestly they're going from, you know, me being at a price around thirty, forty dollars for a haircut, and they go to you and they're okay to spend the one fifty, um, because the experience is behind it and they really do care about their haircut, so that's dope to see as well. Wow. Yeah, no, it's fire. I, I'm I'm striving to do the same. I'm I'm gonna return the favor sometime. Oh no, no doubt, no doubt. I, it's all good. I don't want to see how the experience was with them. They're, they're, they're dope, man, but it's good to see that they're doing, you know, good in their music industry. And, you know, they're spending the money to actually get exposed out there as well because it's hard to make yeah. it as a rapper in the music Thanks. industry. Thanks. Yeah. No, it's love. I, I feel like we all work hard. And, you know, a lot of people want to, um, like, at the, I, I feel like it's only been a year, but it's been so much that's gone into, like, getting here. So, um, I don't take it for granted, bro. And like those type of moments just remind me of how much of a blessing it is. Um, super grateful, bro. And I don't know. You never know. Like I know that uh, barbering is it's one of those things that, like, you can have a phone call tomorrow where someone's like, "Yo, I need a cut in Miami, or I need a cut in like in Florida." Like, who got me? Like, I know who's got yeah. me. So that's dope. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. It. It's sick. No, no doubt, no doubt. Matt, I appreciate well, I appreciate you, you taking care of those clients, man. And it's dope to see that they went back actually. They love the service, they love the cut, so it goes to show that you take pride in what you do too. Love, yeah, thank you, bro. Of course, for sure, Mr. Gifted. Stay gifted. I appreciate you calling in, bro. Happy Thanksgiving, you too, man. All right, bro. All right, y'all. So, so Jay, you're you're in LA now, yes, sir. So, you you went out there when Chuka opened that LA spot, um, yeah, this was last uh, last October. Gotcha. How's that been? How's that transition been? Uh, man, it was tough at first. It was like, I'm not going to lie. Those times where, remember you talked about the call home moment? Yeah. Yeah, I had another one of those. <laughs> <laughs> another so your one first, of those? Your first, your first one. What was your first one like? Did you say, this might not be for me? I'm not cut out for it. It's too harsh. Or did you just simply need some words of inspiration to continue on through your journey? And there's no Jay, there was a month. Jay, he said he needed his bike back. Yeah, he needed his bike, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he needed his bike. <laughs> which uh, which bike it was the second bike bro <laughs> the first one came bro i was just spending way more money than i thought it would take when i got to uh, sacramento and i was getting worried like i had not switched my whole life i grew up in a mindset of like uh scarcity like i don't know if there's gonna be enough you know i always felt that way and it was so deeply like rooted in my mind that i'm still to this day like switching to abundance you know and that's like a daily thing i have affirmations that i say like to remind me and just um, you know, I still, I'm still learning and growing in that area, but it was really prevalent. Like when I first got to Sacramento, like everything costs. And, uh, I was so worried, bro, that I just decided to sleep outside one night. Like my, it was my first week in Sacramento. They raised the price on the, the hostel I was staying at. And, uh, I was like worried cause I was doing Uber to trying to find a place to stay. Like I'll go view the apartment. i am like, all oh, this ain't going to work. Like for whatever reason. So I'll go find another one it was adding up and I was like, just getting worried, bro. So I was like, I'm going to start just like, this sounds crazy, but there was a, um, there was like in the back of the hostel, they had all my stuff in like this closet. And in the back, I just, I literally just bundled up. And, uh, luckily like I only did that one night because uh, I got a call back from the other one. I just basically found the first one I could find the first apartment. But, um, I was pretty worried, bro, that, like, I would just run out of money, but, like, going home wasn't a, like, it wasn't an option. Like, I was going to do whatever it took. Um, but... How many hours of sleep did you get that night, man, realistically speaking? <laughs> Probably, like, four. 
Probably like four. It was a big nap. It was just a nap. That's all we did. <laughs> like this. He was um, like, hope the light. He was, <laughs> yeah. He was hoping that light come back up, right? He was like, all right, they turn it. Man. So uh, the second one would be the bike. You know, things things worked out well. Got my first apartment. But then the, the second bike being stolen, I was like, man, and they got my wallet. Like that, that scarcity started picking back up. Um, and then the third time was when I moved to LA. This was uh, probably October last year. I went from cutting like, you know, five, six haircuts a day, charging like $60. So I was doing fine in Sacramento, comfortable, no reason to leave. Like, you know, everything's going well. Um, but I just, you know, like I said in Ohio, like I always knew there was more for me. Like I, I don't ever want to feel like I'm um, not. Yeah, yeah, like I got to seek, seek, seek and you will find, find, you know, like God has something for us all. So, so I just wanted to make sure that I'm doing, doing his will. will. And I didn't feel that way in Sacramento anymore. I was like, all right, I did what I was supposed to do here. I can, I can tell, tell my time is up. Like, like my intuition, intuition was just telling me it's time to go. So I went to I went to LA, LA and the first couple of weeks, bro, I did like one haircut, haircut per week. week. Like, there was no <laughs> like, like there was, was no walk-ins, there was no clients. And my, my social media, just because I had followers, followers, I thought, you know, everybody's gonna, gonna follow me to LA, or you know, people in LA will be there. Like they'll book me. Nah, bro. I had like the first month they had like five appointments booked, booked like through my booking app. app the rest were like random, random people i would talk to like yo i'm a barber let me cut your hair bro i got you like i would just try to like speak to people um and get clients that way but uh i talked to my mom and i was like mom this is about the moment where i start to wonder why i came out here like i started to think i should go back to sacramento and she said joel this is the moment where your affirmations gotta be louder than your doubts i was like oh knowledge bars shout out to mom with the bars Yes, I've seen, seen, seen her in the background, background too. I've seen, seen her. her. Yes, Mama, Mama Dukes. Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What's up, Mom? Happy yeah. Thanksgiving. <laughs> she ready. <laughs> she ready. Oh, it was, it was my, my birthday yesterday. yesterday. Oh, hey, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. So, do you see where he gets his hair from? Ah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to catch, catch up to her. Nice to meet everybody. My pleasure. That's awesome. Moms, yeah. are, moms are great. So, so Loki, she saved me, bro. Like, like in that, that moment, moment, I was like, oh, you're, you're right. right. Like, that's, that's a good reminder. reminder. Um, and, that and that got, got me back, back on it, you know, just like affirming, like, this is going to work out. Like, like having faith again. again. I, was I was getting in my doubts a little too, too much. So, um, those are my call home moments, bro. Yeah. It's pretty It's pretty interesting, right? Because a lot of us go through those those tough times. And what I tend to notice between my own personal experiences and the experiences of others is, is that, that when, when there's, there's an extreme amount of resistance, it's, it's usually, usually preparing, preparing you for an extreme period of growth. Would you, would, would you say, would you say that's the same for you? <laughs> I, I, I would I never want to go, go through that, that again, but I'm so glad <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's it. I don't want that. That's the feeling. I don't want to feel, feel that again. again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think once you do, there's always going to be more risk and more resistance, but I feel like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't even say, say that the hard part, part is over, but I do feel like I don't think I'm gonna be homeless again, or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's, it's just new, it's just like new hard parts. parts. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> if a black gets stolen, it'll be something bigger, I guess. But yeah, yeah. you're right, bro, for sure. Big, big, big risk, risk, big reward. We have another color. So now, at the stages that you're in right now, who are some people that are still inspiring you to continue to grow at this particular point? Uh, my mentor Daniel Contreras, he goes by Deluxe on Instagram. He doesn't post anymore. Um, but, but I'm in his mentorship program, program and I'm inspired by that every day. Like, like he, he takes you such a different uh, route to the barber industry. That's like just different, bro. So I, I would say that. And then as far as like outside the barber industry, um, my biggest influence is Nipsey Hussle as far as ownership, as far as um, creating a brand that like it really transpired farther than music and it went to just like him being a community organizer and being like um, doing so many more things outside of music and just being yeah, more than legendary, legendary I, I consider him like, like I, don't I don't think he'll, he'll ever truly die, die. like people always going to talk about um nipsey and so um, people, people like him kobe bryant uh, for his relentless work ethic um just being a savage just being like a, no one's gonna outwork me mentality um yeah i read this book called um relentless by tim grover and he talks about cleaners which are like those caliber type of people like he put kobe in there he put michael jordan so anybody who's a, a quote-unquote cleaner uh, I would be inspired by um, definitely Kobe and definitely Nipsey, though. That's, That's pretty awesome. awesome. We have another caller from 813. Not 394, though, right? Not 394. Ah. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, are we are we suspending local from the podcast for a week? No, just no, we just give them a small vacation. 
A small yeah. vacation. Okay, okay. 813, you're on the 245 hotline on the Barber Session. What's good? What's up, man? What's going on? What's going down? It's George, bro. It is JMED20 on the line. Oh, JMED20 20. from Headlines Barbershop. New okay. Tampa in yeah, the house. Barbershop in the house. What's up, man? Chilling. What's good? What's good, bro? What, you got a question for for uh, Jay Faded? Yeah, I got a question, man. I've seen him posting a lot on, uh, doing a lot of lives on, you know, on social media, on Instagram. So my question pretty much is, what was the difference maker for him blowing up the way he's blown up and, you know, gaining the amount of followers and just what was it within the content that he was putting out that worked out for him? I appreciate you calling in, George. Uh, All right, specifically, bro. Specifically, Instagram, right? He's talking about like just as far as uh, video content and stuff. George. Yeah, like what was it that worked for you? You know what? What do you feel like was the thing that draws you know more people into viewing and liking and and following you for whatever you know that you put out? Man, the the biggest lesson I learned is the first three seconds of the video Matt. and the cover. That's good. Say it again. I like that. That's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, for like, for me, man, like, I've been posting for the last like two years. And for me, realistically, like, I'm okay with not having a lot of followers, but having a full book. So, but sometimes people see that as like, you know, they want to have a bunch of followers and then they want to have the full book at the same time. So for me, I'm cool with it. But at the same time, being somebody that, you know, cuts hair and is fully booked, you kind of want to gain that. And, be a face of barbering too so i was just wondering you know like you know you see yourself with over a hundred thousand followers so i just wanted to know what it was but that's good i like that yeah yeah the reason i say the first three seconds of the video and the cover is because that's the first thing that people are going to see you could have a whole brand a whole story a whole everything but uh they're going to scroll past it bro like people have a shorter attention span than a goldfish they say so uh if they're on the explore page and first thing they're going to see is the cover they be like, oh, I got to click this. Like, bro's got, he's got the beard lined up, but the hair above it isn't cut. And he's got the lineup up here done, but it's not fully finished. So they're like, bro, he's got to finish this, right? And the razor's like right there. So they click it so they can see that. that. But, but then uh, that's, that's not, not enough, enough to keep them in the first three seconds. seconds uh, it's got to be super engaging. engaging. It can't be like a before, a before video where you're just like spinning the client slowly. And then it's showing the other angle, spinning the client slowly. And it's just like a dude with a nappy beard. Like, no one wants to, like, wait to see what you're going to do. So um, getting straight to the action, bro. Show the cover, grab their attention. First three seconds, like, get the action going. Um, and I keep most of my videos under 30 seconds as well. So those are the things, like, if I can break it down, it's super simple. Those are some of the things that I'll do. That's up, man. I appreciate it, man. If y'all don't listen out there, write that down. All right, George, appreciate yeah, you calling in, bro. That's a bar. All right, man. Happy that's good. Good. Yeah. Is your, is your social media presence is it is it exclusively to Instagram? Do you do any other platforms or? Man, I did I did the TikTok. Oh man, <laughs> man. you be dancing, bro. TikTok. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir. I might have, I might have, to, have to get get, get on, on that wave, wave though. Who knows? No, I don't be doing uh, dancing. <laughs> I just reposted my Instagram content and did it to the TikTok. And the first time I did, do you add any music to it? How does that work? Do you add the music I have? On the uh, Instagram videos, usually uh, I'll go on YouTube and type in like Jay Z free type beat, or I like to do Jay Z beats. It just seems to match best to my videos for some reason. But um, I'll I'll do the beat and then I'll screen record it and then I'll throw that over top of the video on, you know, Video Leap or the app I use is called Video Leap, but also iMovie uh, is what I used to use. And then yeah, I would just take the same exact video, literally the same like square video, and put it on the TikTok, and it still do well. Like. I don't know how this happened, but the first video I ever posted on TikTok got two and a half million views, and I did nothing. I didn't try like, like. Oh, was that was that you cutting yourself? No, it was a video. Of, it was like a clickbait. I don't do that anymore, but I like set it up to clickbait. Like I had a bunch of hair on his forehead right here, like around his. So I don't. Know, TikTok's kind of more of a younger audience, so they might have liked that. I don't know, but I don't do that anymore because it's kind of. I see that's kind of corny now, but. Um, it was working for me at the time. <laughs> My man said, "I got him in, though. I got him here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was the first time i posted it. and when i saw that bro i posted it like 11 o'clock at night because i saw a couple other barbers were doing it and i wanted to see if it would work for me i saw a um, barber named et shout out to him and then south bay chris uh and i was like what they're just reposting their instagram videos i got tons of videos let me try it out 
posted one, came back like a couple of days later, and it was already at a million. Like a week later, I was at two million, and I checked it not long ago, and it was at like two point five. So I was just like, wow. But honestly, bro, even that, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually start making content specifically for TikTok. I don't want to just repost. That's like the lazier way. But I'm gonna make you better dance if you do that. <laughs> I wanted to dance too. My mom says she wants to dance. <laughs> oh, the barber. There's a guy on TikTok. I'm not sure if you've seen him, but he'll tell like random people that he cuts hair, and and then he'll like cut oh, him in, like, the back of the oh, gas station, I did bro. See that. I did see that, bro. That's wild, bro. Just random people. Is that the big boy? They got no, the no, big no. boy too. They be doing it, man, with no shirt on. That dude is crazy. So he just ran. So imagine, bro. Walks up to people. Imagine, bro. He just walk into the gas station and the guy's yeah. like, "Bro, I'll cut your hair for free right now. I'm a barber." And mind you, he don't even cut hair. And these this dude went viral on TikTok doing that, bro. Oh my god! All right, we have somebody else that, that submitted a question. Um, how do you feel about barber students not getting paid for their haircuts that they do in school? Like, what's what? What if that's their only job? So if you're a full time student. Give me that situation really quick. So you're yeah, a full-time you're a full -time student. student and you're cutting hair. How do you feel about them not getting paid for their haircuts when that's all they have? Uh, technically, they're getting paid. Yeah. Just not, you're not paid in knowledge, bro. Products. Getting paid in knowledge. Yeah, it's called an apprenticeship. We all did it. <laughs> we all did it, bro. Hmm. He got Jay. He got Jay stumble right now. Jay's like, Jay's like, wait a minute. I was like, I was getting paid. I don't know about like, oh. yeah. yeah. Um, I to be completely real, I didn't, I didn't agree with that at all. That's why I chose the apprentice route. Um, I was in Ohio. They didn't have apprentice programs there, so that's when I reached out to Chuka, and he was like, cool with it. And um, long story short, I became an apprentice, and I got paid um for my haircuts in the shop. But of course, I still had class every week. Um, and uh. As far as barber college, I'm, so that means that they would be in class from like, what, like how long does that go? Nine a.m. to four p.m. or that's full time? How does I that? I was, I was going when I went. I was going twelve hours a day, but I was, I was. Insane. Yeah, it's just like it's insane. just like regular school. It's regular yeah. school, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, until that's the fault of our industry, I believe that until that's solved, we do gotta just pay our dues and just get it done because um, there's so many opportunities. Uh... Uh, as a, as a as a a twenty plus year veteran, honestly, I think that it's a privilege for somebody to come in, in give their heads to you, in order for you to get better. Because a lot of the times, those people don't come back, you know, with the same gratitude. Hey man, thank you for allowing me to cut your hair when I stopped, and you gave me the opportunity. So thank you, I really appreciate it. But a lot of the times, man, some people might already be good; they just don't have the the ability, the ability to go to the school, school, you know what I mean, and actually get their license. But I think, realistically speaking, it is a privilege to be uh, to somebody allow them to practice on you to get better. Yeah, that is an interesting perspective. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. I respect it. It's, it's like, like an NCAA, NCAA like, like paying the players. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's touching. You can argue. You can, you can make arguments on both sides. Yeah, I, I, I get that, Dre. That's a great analogy. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, whether, whether you, you go to apprenticeship or barber college, college, either way, I think that what we learn in school is like not what we're actually doing, as far as like how to be a successful barber. Like a lot of this stuff you got to learn on your own, or like learn from an OG or somebody. So, um, the, this is the perspective that a lot of people don't understand. Like how you how you explain a pathogenic to somebody? How do you explain somebody has? Licensing hair, hair. If, if you, you never, never actually went to school to understand that, that. Mm -hmm. you might be cutting somebody with a rainworm. How do you able, able to determine? determine? So, mm -hmm. those, those are the, the facets of barbering that people don't understand. Like, literally, we, we can, can actually go and, get, and become, become an RN, RN right, right after barbering because, because of the knowledge that we acquire. Mm -hmm. So, I remember Basu in the live, he stated, he's like, Our ability, we should be some of the people that are actually granted to cut hair. When, when the actual, actual COVID-19 began, began because yeah, we were in the You see what I'm saying? Right. I got a question with the apprenticeship. Do you have to do a certain amount of school before you start, or like just out the gate you can start at the barbershop? Man, it, 30 hours, um, like a pre-apprentice, -pre like a pre-apprenticeship for 30 hours, and then you're in there. Right after that. What, did, what did you cover? What did you cover in that pre-apprenticeship? Uh, it was just like basics of everything, like basically like, what you're about to cover, but they didn't give you like a quick rundown. It's, I don't know, bro. It's like a mutual movie. This is what you expect, bro. All right, I'm in. So, 
Jay, you're you're are you still in the shop or, or from the, the 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 post that I see you're you're pretty much doing house calls only now, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. How's that transition been for you? How do Lovely. you like that? You in love, love bro. Um, Think twice. <laughs> that was another moment of um just like, like following what God, God has for me. me. I, I never can, can, can describe like why I make these rash decisions. Like just go for you know. Like it's, it's a bold, bold it was a bold, bold choice, but I just did it because um it was time. I don't I, I just knew that uh whenever I do finally make a choice, it's better than like leaving it in the gray area, like oh, should I do this, should I do that? Let me just go find out truth. So I found out truth and um it's been great, bro. Like a lot of opportunities that came away and um things that I didn't think I would be doing yet are happening like sooner than um than expected. So like uh since April I've been fully like house call only type of thing um and it's been incredible bro like i have a few artists i'm doing the haircuts for um i got opportunities to be on set and like music videos and stuff like that and that's been incredible a whole new learning curve you know um but it's definitely sparked a new passion like now i realize what i want to be doing with my barber career um and it's that direction for sure so now let me ask you this when you when you first got this first call or text message and the other person on the other line was like, man, this is such and such. I heard you was good, man. Can you come cut my hair? Mm-hmm. Was you like, no, it ain't, man. Stop it. Because, <laughs> like, I remember the first, the first celebrity call. call. Yeah, like, the first phone call I got was from Nate Burleson. Right. And I was like, Nate Burleson? No, Nate Burleson did. And then he was like, yeah, man. I hung up. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I hung up. He called back. He's like, man, stop playing. So, for, in your experience, what what was that feeling like? I'm trying to think of who I would say was that first person. Um, uh, uh, let me see. So, it kind of, like, uh, what's that called? Build up. Uh, domino affected. Oh, domino. A yeah. chain reaction? Yeah, chain reaction. Like, one person led to another. They saw me cutting his hair. So, then he's like, oh, I trust you. You can cut my hair. Like, um, That's called the power of one. The power of one. The power of one. Yeah. All you gotta that do is one person to believe in you, and then the rest huh. will follow. Yeah, yeah. That one person was Chuka, I would say. But as far as um, as far as celebrity clients goes, it was a guy named Ronnie J. He's a producer for Kanye, for um, a lot of big names, and uh, he also cuts or he also produced Smoke Perp's newest album. And I was cutting his. He DM'd, DM'd me one day. This, this was, was back, back in like January, January this year. year. This is when it all picked up for me. Like this year is very, very uh, recent. And he's just like, yo, bro, you available? And I was like, yeah, I could be there within an hour. And I didn't know where he was yet. He was just like, um, he was like, all right, cool. He sent me the address. It was like a hotel that was literally six minute Uber away. So it was like nothing to get there. And uh, yeah, I hadn't even done a house call yet. Like the whole time I was in Sacramento, never did a house call. Two years. The whole time I was in LA for like four months. I had a house call. So this is like my first time. I never really like open to those. I didn't really see the point in them. But in LA, obviously, it's a different story. So um, I, I just, you know, packed all my stuff up like I did when I was in Ohio when I used to do college dorm room, uh, dorm calls, you know. I remember That was like, I went from doing those type of house calls to straight to this one. Like the last house call I did would have been in Ohio in the dorm room. So it was a crazy feeling. Um, yeah, and we go. I go to his hotel room. Very bougie. He ordered room service like three times during the haircut. Um, <laughs> he asked, just, just he asked you, "Do you want anything?" No. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> he said, "You ain't here to eat. You're here to work. You're here to work. <laughs> Cut my hair." <laughs> the last thing I want. Dude, I was like, oh man! See, so that's the best, bro. Maybe I'm the old man. Well, well J, JP's the old man in the group, but you got to relax. You got to relax. There's something, there's something about house calls. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's different with what you're doing, maybe. Or maybe you can, uh, you know, elaborate or pro- provide context. I just don't like doing house calls. Like, the chair's uncomfortable. It don't spin. I got to be. Is, is there an element where you're like, of that, where you're like, man, this this is cool, but damn, I miss a barber chair and a proper mirror and nice lighting. Absolutely, bro. I think uh, it it's definitely draining, and so it must be worth our time as a barber because if we do a house call on a Sunday, that's going to drain our energy for the whole week, bro. Like, it has a negative effect on our business if we do things that we don't feel are worth our time. So I definitely believe in, like, charging what you're worth. And, if, and a lot of the time, that means turning down business, basically. Because I'll say my price 
and I know that like the people are gonna be like, oh, it's too much, bro. That's fine. Like you're not my client. Um, because it's got to be worth it. I used to not do that. I used to like lower it just to get the opportunity. I don't really feel like I need to do that all the time anymore. But um, there's a time and a place for it in your career, of course. Like you want to jumpstart things. You know, be a hustler. I used to do ten dollar haircuts in Ohio, so I know all about it. But um, yeah, I definitely agree, bro. I'm six five, so you can imagine me crouching over uh, on someone's little stool or something like all day. That ain't gonna work. I'm gonna have a short career if I do that. Hey, you gotta relax. And I see, career, I see some of these celebrities getting haircuts, man, and just being extra rude, bro. I'm not saying your clients or anybody you experience, but just stuff that I've seen on on, on IG and stuff like that. I mean, way slouched and playing. I'm like, dude. I feel like I'm not going to say I'm not going to say who it was. I'm not going to say who it was, but I recently saw you on a doing a haircut on a high profile individual and he did have the camera all in your face. But he didn't even give you a tag and I was like, "You going to do my boy like that?" Oh man. Oh man. He didn't give you a tag. He literally was like in your face and I'm like, "At least hit him with the at like <laughs> Yeah, and, um, he, he means well. He means well. I, I like him. He means well. Yeah. Um, one thing I learned from Big Ben is to establish that relationship. Like, I feel like Big Ben has done it better than anybody as far as like um, meeting people and not making it about getting a photo. Like, I feel like a lot of the people that these celebrity barbers cut, we never even would know that they were cutting their hair. Like, so that happened to be a dope moment where he posted it. Of course, I would have loved to have a tag, but um, the 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 main like priority for me is just like, can I deliver? Can I make sure I get him the best service he's got? Um, when he comes to LA every time he thinks of me. Um, and I know that that's way more valuable than the, you know, the Instagram story tag or whatever it is. And again, it goes back to the part one. So at the end of the day, the part of one, that one person believes in you. Mm. Everybody who comes in LA that that person knows will forever. I, I, I can relate. I have 20 years. I've never had one picture of individuals that I've taken care of, but I can call them anytime. Fire. Wow. Yeah. There you go. So, so what's this book, man? This is this a book? The, the, book? the Power of One? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually a book. It's called The Power of One. Sound familiar. Okay, I might have to pick that up. Pick it up, brother. <laughs> well, it's a great book. The, re the reality is that we are one person from actually uh, knowing somebody great. So that person could be great. I'll give you one example. I cut this individual, and he was signed to the... Uh, to Jordan. Okay. So I could have been one person away from meeting Jordan, if you will. So that's essentially the power of one. You know somebody great who you last provided a service for. That person knows a person that knows uh, a few ministers in that particular country. So you one person away from actually know somebody even greater. One away. I believe that, most definitely. That is the power of one. I like it. So, Jay, what's what's next? Um, is it is it just um, continue to do house calls? Do you want to uh, eventually, uh, you know, do educational tours? Do you? I mean, what's next for Jay Faded as far as industry, career, all? I'm dominating uh, the market in LA for haircuts is all I really am focused on. I don't I don't have any other. I did have a ton of shiny objects. And I would try to do shiny object syndrome is something very common. Um, uh, and people in general, but especially in the barber industry. Uh, and I was a part of that as well. Was, uh, that was something I was doing. But right now I'm singular, like obsessive focus and just maximizing the value I bring, um, which is through my uh, problem solution base as far as like, why do my clients come to me? Okay, because I can lay the waves down, I can give them a crispy lineup, I can give them a tight blend, I can enhance their beard, make their haircut last a few extra days. Um, because if they're receding on one side, I know how to blend around it, make it appear to still be dark without the enhancements, clean razor shave, all that. Then I can enhance it, apply them properly. Um, so that's my problem solution based when I say that's what I mean. Knowing exactly why these clients are coming to me. Um, if it's a beard sculpt, if it's a... Uh, that's honestly everything I said is my main things. Um, I don't really do straight hair. Like if you guys notice, I don't post straight haircuts at all. I just... I have my lane, and I'm, I'm looking to master it and uh, master the value I bring. That's literally it, just my craft. That's the main thing. I think that that's a dope perspective because you're right. A lot of people do get shiny shiny object um, um, syndrome, <laughs> and you start jumping around here and jumping there before you master one thing. 
that's that's a cool perspective to have. We have Thank another you. caller. Fire. Fire. 386, you're on the 245 hotline on the Barber Session Live. What's good? Yo, Yo this is Shannon. Shannon. S. Craft Blends is oh, in the Whoa. building, Jay. What's going on? Yo, Yo Shannon, Shannon, I heard, I heard, I heard great, great things, things, bro. I haven't got, got to, to meet you yet. yet. I know I'm looking forward to meeting you. I actually just uh, cut somebody the other day that they got a cut with you and they were out in Cali and uh, you mentioned my name, so I appreciate that. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Was, was it, it uh, Mas Who was it? Yeah, it was, it was him and his boy. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, you know, we love your work, man. But, uh, yes, yeah, so I was going to ask basically. How do you how do you set up your prices for your house calls and uh, you know are you just are you keeping the prices the same whenever you are doing like high profile clients or do you kind of just you know do you raise the price I mean you're just trying to keep it even across the board or what? I have I have one client or one friend uh, Dino the barber he'll charge an extra seventy five dollars every hour he has to drive. I like, I like that, that but um, um, for me, I, I just, just keep, keep it one, one, one flat rate. rate. Uh, if, if it is like, it just depends, depends on the situation. Sometimes, Sometimes I get a phone, phone call, and it'll, and it'll be like, like 10, 10 o'clock at night, night on a Monday, Monday and then they're like, like what we, we need, need right, right now. now. Like, like it's four, four of us. What? <laughs> and, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, bro, you're going to need to pay me up front. And because like, I'm really strict on my life outside of barbering. Uh, making, making sure that, that I have a strict routine, routine where I go to bed at the same time, I wake up at the same time, time eat my meals at the same time, I want everything to be a system. system. So that's, that's going to mess, mess my whole system, system up. So you want me to, yeah. um, you want you want me to go, go against all my principles, principles that I follow to come give you some haircuts, haircuts right now. Uh, it's going to be worth it. When usually when I say the price, they're not down to do it, which is fine with me because I want to stick to my system anyway. But when they are down to do it, then it's a win-win situation. Everybody's happy. And I don't feel like I'm, you know, Going, going against, against like, because I want to be aligned, aligned with it, basically. I don't, I don't feel like, like I'm in alignment most of the time. With the, uh, like, like, tons, tons of opportunities house calls come, you know, it's not worth the barber's time. time. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, bro, like, like set, set, set your price and live your life, life like, like Jay-Z said. I think um, make sure, sure it's worth it. Like, at least three times you're making the shop or more. And on weekends, definitely. So, you don't mind me asking. So, if I was out in Cali and I needed a house call, man, how much you going to charge me? 400 400 for the house call? Yeah. That's what's up, man. Uh, Jay, I, I would All hurt right. my back for that. I would, I, we were just talking about, you know, I'm cool. All of a sudden, my back don't hurt, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Shannon, you just recently raised However, your prices, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've raised my prices, but actually, uh, I've still been getting a lot of people in the DMs blowing me up, you know, trying to get a cut. And right now, I probably have 100 DMs that I've, I don't even look at man just because if I see at the beginning, you know, of the message, like how can I make an appointment or, you know, whatever, you know, about a haircut, I just don't even open it anymore just cause I'm tired of reading them and responding back, honestly. And I'm not taking new clientele, but because of the demand, I was like, Hey, I'll just throw it out there and, and say, you know, if you want to, I uh, just open up 10 spots, but they're strictly, you know, $100 or more, and you have to put out some requirements. You have to be at least a bi-weekly client, um, you know, if not weekly. And uh, and you got to be committed, man. And if you're late or no call, no show, you're done. Like, there's no second chances or anything like that. So, anyways, I'm getting some feedback on that. And uh, But I will say that, obviously, in Florida, the price difference for haircuts, I think are extremely different. Would you say? I haven't been to Florida yet, actually. I mean, I've been to Florida, but not like recently um, to understand the price. I mean, like, for example, yeah, for example, like you can get a two story, four bedroom house, you know, three bath or whatever for like 1700 a month. Where I had a friend from Cali who came and just sat in my living room and was like, dude, how much do you pay for this house? And he was like, I can fit my whole crib in your in your living room and I pay thirty five hundred a month, you know. Thirty five what? So I think that the Yeah, thirty five hundred a month for his house. 
And uh, so that's what I was saying. I was like, man, I mean, with the price of everything else in Cali and all the state taxes and everything else, I would assume that everything is more expensive. So my thought was like me charging, say, $60 for a haircut here would average about $100 a haircut there. I mean, I don't know what you guys think about that. That sounds in line. Yeah. I mean, it, the cost of living is higher. Uh, I, I think pretty much across the board in California, it's 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 more than here, right? I mean, I, I, Dre, you can speak to it. You've been all over the, the freaking country with Basio. I know when people find out what I, I know when people find out what we charge at, at headlines, they were shocked in California, right? So I feel like, uh, yeah, the average the average ticket is a little higher, and then anytime you're paying for quality, uh, is going to be up there. Um, you're still obviously going to have your barber shops out there that still charge 15, 20 bucks a haircut. Um, and even out here, especially, especially after the, uh, this pandemic, we're starting to understand the value of our services. So I feel like across the board, the, uh, the haircuts are going up, but at the same time, you still have sharks. So they're still going to do the 15 and 20 just to try to be on the cheaper side to, uh, to get people in. Well, I know in the Tampa area, from my knowledge, like 30 and 35 was like the the max as far as the highest barber prices in the area. And, uh, you know, except for Basio, you know, he only wants to record YouTube haircuts. So if you're going to get a cut with him, you're going to pay a hundred bucks, you know, but so the average was 30, 35. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to raise it for everybody and went to uh, you know, from 30, 35 to, to 50 and 60. And, and I'm still booked, man. That's why I was like, you know what? I mean, if the demand's Let's there, go. I'm going to go ahead and charge a hundred and see what happens. Let's go. Let's go. Congrats on the Let's first go. price. Raise the bar, bro. Thank you got you. it. Thank yeah. you. The funny thing and is, I, and that's what's funny is I was going to say, like, even, you know, I tell the guys in the shop and say, hey, whenever the tide rises, the boats rise with it, you know, and, and they're all seeing like Nate is sitting next to me now. And, uh, and you know, his second cut in, he's like, bro, I already made uh, 80 on the first cut, 60 on the second cut, you know, and he charges 30, 35. And uh, so anyways, they're seeing it. It's becoming like a, a normal thing in our shop. And, and uh, you know, I mean, a lot of my customers give me, you know, 100 or 100 plus for a cut. I mean, I would say the average price would be $80 a cut. So I think that the more they see my customers doing that, then, of course, they want to show love to their barber as well. And I think that as we raise that standard in the area, you know, other barbers are going to jump on as well. I think what was crazy about you, though, Shannon, is is when you raised them. Um, I remember having the conversation with you and – I remember Bozzi being like, just, just, you need to raise it, bro. You you need to raise your yeah, prices. Man. And I remember you being like, man, I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't and you know. did 50 and 60, and it was like, I don't know. And you got more booked. I don't understand how, that, how that always that, happens, bro. Hey, whenever I was at 2025, which was the standard rate and probably still is in the area, when I went to 30, 35, I was scared to death, man. And, uh, I just thought that I would lose customers, and and of course um, I may have lost one or two, uh, but I noticed that as people started paying more, um, as far as for the haircut, they also started tipping more. And I had people that wouldn't tip at all. I mean, they'd give me like a flat twenty or a flat twenty-five for a haircut and beard, and then uh, they'd just walk out. You know, I'm like, dang. And then I thought, you know, I'm definitely gonna lose this person, so I'm sitting here trying to figure out is it worth it you know, doing the math on it. And anyways, I was like, well, if I lose some of this, what it is, but they stayed and then started tipping, you know, and like giving me like 50 bucks. And, and uh, I was like, what? So, and whenever I didn't lose anyone and then I started realizing, okay, I'm booked and my average price per haircut was around the $60 price. So then I knew that if I raised it to $60, even if they didn't tip, I'm still getting what I want, you know? And, uh, and anyway, so I wasn't as scared the second time I raised the price simply because um, my wife does hair and she makes more money than I do. She makes good money. And uh, and during the quarantine, she actually, you know, kind of spoke to me and said, hey, what do you think about like 
stopping hair, you know, just quit cutting hair all together. And I was like, why? You know? And uh, she said, I just feel like you're more relaxed at the house. You know, you haven't been stressed or whatever. And, and, and it's because I was working, you know, all hours of the night. I was trying to cram everybody in. I'm, you know, just back to back to back to back. And then, you know, if somebody shows up 15 minutes late, it throws your whole day off. And you're just, you know, I, I, I'm the, I like to be on time. I don't like my customers sitting there waiting for me. And if I look over and see them sitting there waiting, knowing they're my next appointment, it would stress me out. And I guess uh, she just noticed a, a difference, you know, just that I had more peace. And she was like, I, she's like, babe, you, you can pay the bills our whole life. I'll make good money. I can cover the bills, stay home and do something else, you know, just chill. Well, I and I was like, you know what? Yeah, for sure. I got to keep it for sure. But so with that, it helped me to realize that if I raise my price to 50 and 60 and say I lost out of my customers, I almost double my price anyway, so I would be good. But if I did, you know, lose customers, she's willing for me to, to not even work. You know what I mean? So I was like, man, this is, this is a good deal here. You know, so I was safe for both. Um, you can go to the back side of the um, But uh, sorry, we just pulled up in a Chick-fil-A, so you might hear some talking about me. But anyway, so, so, so with that, absolutely, I got you. We're heading to the mountains, bro. We're going on a trip. But uh, bring down, bring down anyways, yeah <laughs> so so we went ahead and uh so when i raised my prices i wasn't scared about it and and honestly like i said even now um the average is about 80 dollars a cut and i'm still booked as booked as i want to be still trying to find time to get people in that um you know and there again i got people DMing me you know every day man probably a couple times a day hey man how can i get on your book you know money no no uh issue and uh, so I didn't want to cut anymore, but I was like, you know what, if I can go ahead and just take 10 more at, at at least $100, that's a, and, and, and if we're doing every other week, that's at least an extra $1,000 uh, every two weeks. So I was like, that'll work, you know. But I'm living a comfortable life, man. And, and you know, as you've heard me say before that, you know, I value peace over money. So, you know, I want peace in my life. And, uh, and that's what I'm trying to create my, my life around, my schedule around is just peace. Man. Oh, we're gonna have to get Shannon on a call on 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 one of these barber sessions. Oh yes, yeah, we got to we gotta give him we gotta give him a segment, bro. That's 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 in the works. That's in the works. Of yeah, you better bring that Chick Fil A to him, brother. I feel I feel I feel hey. kind of privileged, Shannon, that I I I could I could get in with you. You know what I mean? Like people are hitting you up, and you know, I feel kind of privileged. Yeah, man. Hey, you know, whenever you got Perez in your life, you got to make room for Perez, man. Appreciate that, man. So, it's amazing. You actually, uh, the, my favorite part about that was that when he raised them, Jay, he actually had to, because, you know, the initial raise, you're afraid you're going to lose. The second raise, you're afraid you're going to lose. And when he raised it the second time, he got such positive feedback that he literally had to put another post out and favorite. say, hey, not everyone's going to make the cut. Like yeah, now, yeah. now I have to fire people because this is the schedule that I'm gonna work. This is how many haircuts I'm gonna do in a day. I'm not doing any more. I'm not doing any less. So some of you aren't gonna make the cut. And people were like, "Wait, you're firing me? Yes, I'm firing you. you we yeah, have barbers yeah. that are great here at the shop. You can go to them. Yeah. But I'm taking this many people. And that's it. So if you didn't make the cut, hey, hit me up. Somewhere. And honestly, man, the, depending on how this whole ten haircut you know thing works out, if I get ten people that with you know. Within the first couple of minutes, I already had somebody jump on and say, hey, I, I want to be on that list, you know. So, anyways, if I can get 10 people at, you know, $100 a head, and even if I could do that, because, you know, for me, like, I would, I'd be okay with my wife, the money that she makes and everything else. I would be okay with making $1,000 a week, 1500 a week, whatever, and just do 10, 15 heads. So if, if I can move it up to a hundred dollars a head and and uh and do less heads, man, I mean that gives me more time for other things that I want to do in my life, you know. So, um, but I, honestly, I feel like you know I've got to give God a shout out, but I feel like God has put favor on my life, and at this point, I feel like He's gonna bring who I need to, you know, He's gonna bring the right people into my life. And they're gonna pay what they need to pay, you know. And and uh, and I've come to realize, man, you know, a lot of people trip out about the prices that we ask, and it's like, 
I just come to realize, man, that, you know, there are some people that'll pay 15,000 for a pair of shoes. You know what I'm saying? There's people that pay 2000 for a right. belt. And, uh, right. and you know what? Crazy. what? Wal- Walmart. Yeah. Wal- Walmart. You know, you may be able to get a belt for $9 and they got, pe- they got, you know, hundreds of people, you know, in there, um, when you walk in, um, but Gucci, you know, they, you're going to pay like two grand for a belt or whatever. And you might hardly, you know, you might not see really anybody in there, but they're both doing good. You know what I'm saying? They're both surviving. And, and, uh, I would rather be a Gucci barber than a Walmart barber. Speaking speaking of Gucci, speaking of Gucci and and, and high lifestyle, Jay, being in LA, I got to ask you, you're a young man out here. I don't know how far mom's is, but what's that lifestyle like out there? Uh, as far as he, you mentioned, he got a solid one. Shannon, they I, pre- be, I appreciate you calling in, bro. I'll let you get, I'll let you get off, man, because I know you're going through the drive-thru and stuff they, like that. They be sliding in the DMs, yeah, bro. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, hey, y'all have a good one. You as well, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Appreciate you, bro. Oh, um, yeah, there's tons of distractions out here, bro. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice way to... <laughs> there's lots of distraction out here. <laughs> you, you, you being a, a, a barber and an R&B-ish sex symbol in there how's the dms uh i'm gonna be honest bro i just got out of like my first relationship i was in a relationship for like six months and uh i pretty much ended it because i it was my first time trying i thought maybe i could make it work right but every time i'm kicking it with my girl i'm thinking about how many haircuts i could be doing or like how many videos i could be creating like how much content i could be editing or how much i could be studying this mentor program i'm in like oh man whatever. Uh, if I'm staying up late, I know like the next day I'm gonna be groggy and the whole week I'm gonna be tired. It throws my whole week off. So uh, even though this girl's like my soulmate, I felt like uh, uh, maybe maybe in due time you know we'll meet each other again. But right now I'm in that mode where I'm just locked in, bro. Like the last thing I'm really thinking about is you know uh, the girls in my DMs that because they all offer me the same thing, a distraction. So I was joking when I said that, but I'm also serious. Like uh, there's nothing I want more than to like you know lock in, like really experience like a a new level of locked in this because I know I haven't reached my potential. I'm not even close. Um, and uh, yeah, like I feel like whatever I've done so far, I've been doing those distractions. Like they've been getting me. So I want to just like experience what life could be like if I just lock in. Um, uh, Black China hit you up talking about come through and cut little tiger. You ain't gonna pull up. <laughs> <laughs> there's brother, so many distractions. There's this girl. She was bad, and her her son is like a year old, and I don't really cut kids, but I said yes to cut her kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make an exception. <laughs> everywhere. The distractions are everywhere, bro. I haven't actually cut his hair yet, but I did tell her yes, so I don't know what's <laughs> my man said I'm six five. I'm gonna hold him right here and fit him up. <laughs> oh man. man. Jay, you got anything else, JP? You got anything else, Dre? Nah, nah, I'm good. All right, so what do you see you, what do you see yourself right now? I I can't current stage in uh in the next five years. Do you see yourself continuing to just uh you know, cater to celebrities, you see opening your own establishment. Mm. How is that working for the next five years? Um, one thing about me is I'm big on affirmations. I'm big on um, manifestation. I'm big in the law of attraction. One thing you guys might know about me, obviously, because I shared the vision board is um, like speaking into existence and just uh, trusting your intuition and following like, I can't give you an answer as far as five years. I have an overall um, understanding that I want to have a real estate empire after barbering um i don't i don't know if that will include me doing things like educational tours or i know christian i mentioned that or um uh what else whatever other shiny objects i could be attracted to right now um i know that focusing on you know just up in the value like uh there's a ton of barbers in la that have paid their dues i've only been here for a year so i got work to do in a, a current situation that's where i'm at um I just have this affirmation that says my business is becoming the vehicle to complete my ultimate purpose in life. And I say that every day. Uh, and I believe that I believe that barbering is a vehicle for me to, um, to get to that ultimate purpose. I don't think it's even has anything to do with barbering, but I know that barbering is the vehicle to get me there. Um, so yeah, by the time I'm, you said five years, so when I'm 28, uh, I would have hoped that I'd maximized, you know, my situation by then so that I could move on to the next evolution of, Joel Thompson, not just Jay Faded. That's pretty cool. Bro, the um, amount um, of discipline, bro, 
for 23 years old and just you are locked in, bro. It, it's 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 impressive. Too, it's, it's impressive. I'm not gonna lie. At 23 years old, I I, I mean shit, J, J P. No, I mean you gotta relax. You gotta I relax. was yeah, man. You are long you are ago. locked. You are locked. It was a long time ago. You don't need to put that out there like that. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't need to, you don't need to put it out there like that. I I understand that it was a long time ago, but I, I couldn't even put my life on social media back then. We didn't even have that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we 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 had follow the flip phone. We're, we're flip follow phone. Me we're follow me on my face. But either way, Jay, I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, when this all pandemic is, is all over, man, we obviously need to link up, man. Uh, it, it was awesome having you on. Dre, you got nothing else? JP, you got nothing else? Jay Fader, continue doing what you're doing, man. Jay, so we'll off. be seeing you in a, in a new city hopefully soon, man. Most definitely. It's always dope dope running into you at the shows and stuff. Max, I'm excited for the next one. Anytime I can get on here and share my story and hopes that someone listening is impacted, I'm really grateful that you guys have this. Uh, going for people like myself to jump on here and do this. So thank you. Thank you. All right, man. So we look forward to seeing you dancing on TikTok, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, happy Thanksgiving. Mom, happy Thanksgiving, mom. You can still hear me. <laughs> Y'all sure. have a good one. Have a blessed one. Have a blessed yeah, one, man. Take care. Happy holidays.